Hello everyone and welcome back to the Book Brood and welcome back to A Season for Category. We're going to go for book two here in the year of 2021. We're, this might be the last one. Uh, we're going to see how many we can squeeze in, but I'm making sure I enjoy the reads that I do read. So I'm going to take with my as much time as I need with them to have fun, uh, give you some fun content, and to appreciate the book as well. So who are we going with now? This is a longtime follower of my category journey, and so it's time to feature one of her books. It's Beth Carpenter, and we're reading An Alaskan Family Christmas. So I've noticed her heartwarmings are mostly featured in Alaska, so I think it's a whole town situation up there. I don't know. We're jumping in. Uh, I think this is the second most recent one. It's not her most recent, but I think it's the one behind it. So we're jumping in in the middle of a series, but that's all right. These are structured so we can do that. And let's go ahead and get into chapter one. So we have Natalie, a name I love, by the way. So wonderful beginning. And she's sitting in her car in a freezing cold parking lot, scoping out some post a, a post office store, so some P.O. boxes. Her friend is, is pregnant and trying to get in contact with the father, so Natalie is trying to help her out. So we've got a stakeout. Natalie's trying to see if the father will come pick up his mail and she's going to confront him, or we don't, we don't really know yet. So we think it's a bust when someone that fits the description enters the post office store, goes to the correct post office box, and retrieves the mail. So she follows this guy all the way onto a train. It's going back to where she needs to go. So she thinks, so she's she's okay taking a one-way trip. It's just her and this guy on the train, so he pretty easily notices her. So we get a perspective shift, and our hero is Tanner, and he's sitting on this train. Uh, we find out He's not the actual owner of that mailbox, but he notices this woman watching him on the train, and he asks her to join him for lunch in the dining car when the dining car opens. So that's where chapter one leaves us. This is a wonderful setup to some situations that are going to be just lovely. So I eagerly go on to chapter two, and I will check in with you there. Hello, everyone, and welcome back. I can't believe I forgot my special headgear. Got it now, and so we're, we're looking good. So I finished chapter two. So Natalie and Tanner have their, their first date. Natalie's doing this very enjoyable thing where the more she learns, the faster her brain goes to the worst case, worst outcome that could possibly be. That's obviously what's going on. She can't help thinking that this guy's, you know, fairly good looking, and this just makes him seem like a worse and worse guy, because he's obviously lying. He's obviously a liar and a cheat, and he's running away from a pregnancy. It's just, he's just the, the worst person ever. But at the same time, she's also getting to know him through all of this, and realize that he's kind of, he's kind of a good guy, kind of a great guy. And things are, things are going to get, going to get complicated. So, they have their lunch. It's beautiful. They get to a stop, but it's just a flag stop. I don't know exactly quite what this is. I probably should have Googled it before I started talking about it, but that just goes to show you how prepared I am for these, these vlog entries here. What I think that means is it's not a regular stop. It's not a, really quite a station either, maybe. I'm not quite sure. Anyone in the know on the railway lingo or if this is a specific Alaska thing, go ahead and let me know in the comments, and uh, I appreciate it very much. But this, this stop is not a regular stop, and Natalie's found herself stranded. And Tanner knows that something weird is going on. He realizes it's quite obvious that this woman is a bit out of her mind, even though she's kind of attractive and has great personality and, you know, would make a great wife. Things we can get to later. So this is the remote location. There's nowhere to go. There's no inn or room to rent or anything. There's a shack. Circumstances are not ideal. And what happens? Oh my goodness. What happens? Tanner is going to have to take her home with him and wait the three days it'll take for the train to come back and pick up new passengers. That is where chapter two leaves us. So I will check in after chapter three. 
Hello everyone, welcome back. I have finished chapter three. Natalie and Tanner have this very cute experience getting from the train to the house and there's bonding and everything, but she can't, she can't quite tell what to feel because she knows this guy's a liar because of just preconceived notions she's put in her own head. The more she learns and realizes that she kind of likes him, that just means the worst that he's just even worse of a person. We get to meet the family, and of course, Natalie is just appalled that somehow this guy has dragged children into his lot. It's it's just it's just terrible. However, when we work to the end of chapter three, we do we do get some truths that come out, and and everyone can be a little bit little bit more honest about each other. Now, hopefully, everything's going to settle into a, just a wonderful Christmas vacation. And we can just have this lovely, cozy love story and, and everything will work out just perfect. So I'll go on to chapter four and I'll let you, I'll let you know if my prediction comes true. Hello everyone, I'm back and I finished chapter four. We've had a meal together with the family. There, there were some, some truths that came out between Natalie and Tanner, but they still, they still don't quite trust each other or who their friend slash cousin is and what kind of person they are and but there's a a lovely back and forth there of suspicion on behalf of the one that's close to them whether that be the cousin your cousin or your best friend good moments there we had a nice family meal we got those little snippets of where someone close to our main characters kind of you know sees sees what's going on there before our main characters do. And I love that stuff when the side characters are, are well in the know about what's going on. And they, they, can, they can take different approaches to it depending on the book of whether they're uh, subtle or not so subtle about that. So I'll, I will not tell you how it is in this one and leave that as a surprise for you. So far, this book is just, it just feels like being at a Christmas gathering. Now, definitely a, a remote Christmas, remote snowy Christmas gathering where there's not always reliable electricity. You know, there's there's a generator, but there's no permanent grid electricity. I'm not sure if I could do that or not. That's It takes a special kind of roughing it. All right, that's where I'll leave you, and I will check in after Chapter 5. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I have finished Chapter 5. And you know, I'm, I'm sorry if I'm seeming like I don't have much to say about this book. It's not true. There's plenty I have to say about this book, but there's plenty I can't say without just regurgitating everything to you here. So this is an incredibly sweet and just cozy romance. And it's not just, not just the romance. It's, it's like if a perfect family were a blanket and you could wrap it around yourself. That's kind of that's kind of the vibe this book is giving off here with just a touch of romantic tension between our main characters here. But we had a, a lovely time picking out a Christmas tree and I need to compliment the writing of two small children in this. That is a very difficult thing to do. Even for, for people that have had children, mine are nine and 11. I don't think I could write a six-year-old anymore because I've just forgotten what that's like to be with that every day. So it's a challenging thing to do, but Beth Carpenter does it excellently. Bravo to you. Then I'll say Natalie seems to keep getting it in her head that she's going to be gone before Christmas, but I know and we all know that circumstances will not allow for Natalie to not be there for Christmas because it would just be, it would not be an Alaskan family Christmas. I feel like if Natalie isn't there to be part of it. So I will continue on to chapter six and I will let you know how much cozier this gets. Hello everyone. I finished chapter six. More of the cozy. Cozy all over the place. We had a moment where all the family needed to go visit some of the neighbors, but then oopsie, what happens? Oh, Tanner and Natalie are at the cabin all by themselves and they're just gonna have to get to know each other a little better. It's not our fault. It's not our fault, but we can enjoy the consequences. Really just lovely moments, too, that really capture the holiday spirit and the, the true meaning for family and getting together in, in these times. I 
have heard a lot of my bookie friends talking recently. Some of them have shared the opinion that the more holiday that they, they haven't gotten that holiday feeling from their holiday reading this season. What I can say for this book is this book does not have that effect. It's definitely putting me in the Christmas mood just at the right time. So as of filming this, it's the 22nd. On that note, I will get back to it and I will check in with everyone after chapter seven. Okay, everyone, I'm finished chapter seven. There was a board game showdown between two quite evenly matched competitors, and we were glad to see that we had some some foreshadowing. It was good to finally see that in action and some interesting consequences of that. Now, our situation has changed completely as well. Something out of the blue came out of nowhere, and everyone, not just Natalie, got something out of the blue that's changed, changed the recipe for the whole situation. There was also a moment that changed the recipe just for Natalie and Tanner. Very beautiful, beautiful, serene moment. Quite lovely. Thank you for that, Beth Carpenter. So we don't quite know where we stand now. Natalie stayed an extra day, but we're not quite to Christmas yet. So I will move on to chapter eight, and I will let you know how things progress. Hello, everyone. Welcome back. I finished chapter eight. We got to one of those moments in a heartwarming novel where everything gets all too real and the situation goes from like, oh, we're fun, we're sweet, we're, we're falling in love to, oh yeah, we're in the real world and stuff goes down sometimes. We're dealing with the fallout of that. Everyone's coming together, everyone's trying to check in on their loved ones and all of that put a cramp on Natalie's plans on what she was going to do come Christmas Eve, Christmas, things like that. It gave us what we wanted, but not in the way we wanted it. And we don't know if that's what we wanted anymore. I mean, we'll just have to see how Beth Carpenter takes us through this, where we're going to leave it in her hands and we're going to trust that she's going to do right by everyone involved. So I will continue on through chapter nine and I will let you know how things go. Hello everyone, I'm back and I finished chapter nine. There was a very scandalous moment in here for a heartwarming. There was a, can't give it all away, but there was a, a sensual bathing scene that involved both our main characters here. It, I'm serious. It was on page and everything. Like how Beth got this past the editors, I don't know, but we're celebrating over here. And you know what? Bravo. Good, good job, Beth. Way to, way to slip that in. Otherwise, things have calmed down since we had that serious moment in the last chapter. Things just keep getting warmer and cozier. If Christmas is your thing, this is the, the perfect, perfect read for, for your holidays. I'm going to continue on through chapter 10, and I will check in then. All right, everyone, I've finished chapter 11. We are closing in on Dane. So this, this whole book started out with trying to find Dane. Where's Dane? He's been avoiding us this whole time, which is okay because it's helped Natalie and Tanner get to know each other. They've got to know each other very well lately. And it's, it's so beautiful. They're all up in their own heads making their own assumptions. And it's, it's not helping, but they, there's still Dane there to keep them together because they still have to find him and make sure everything's, everything's good for Brooke and him. So that's where we are. It's getting exciting. We're getting towards, we're not quite, we're just a little little bit past halfway. So I will check in after another chapter or so. Hello everyone, I have finished chapter 13. Tanner and Natalie, they keep inching closer and closer, finding Dane, but thankfully so far they, they're, they're keeping from that and they, hit, and they have to keep going on dates and spending the night together. I mean, not together, because this is heartwarming, but um, spending the night adjacent to one another. So we've gone from the trapped in cabin vibe now. We've got this small town vibe going on while they're trying to track down Dane. It's super cute and I'm gonna keep going. So I will check in after another chapter or so. Hello everyone, I finished chapter 14 and I mean, things, can't tell you exactly what happened, but things in the story progressed. 
and it looks like we'll get some nice revelations and things like that, some things we wanted to happen for a while. But I'll tell you what, this book gives you everything you want and not the way you want it and just leaves you in these bittersweet moments over and over. It's uh, just it's magnificent writing is what it is. I will continue along. It's like that point in the book where you know it's going to, you know the ending's coming, but you don't want it to happen. So you think about putting off the book. I won't do that, though. I'm going to continue on, and I will check in after another chapter or so. Hello, everyone. I'm back. I finished chapter 15. Things have progressed. Can't Again, can't tell you exactly how. Tanner and Natalie are having a bit of a struggle, actually. They're, they're overly concerned. That's, that's what they are. They're each overly concerned. And it's adorable, too. It's like overprotective parents. So they're married. It's just, it's just settled now. They just need to figure it out for themselves. But let me just tell you, the things I can't tell you about in Chapter 15 are super, super, uber cute so adorable just such a oh it was such a touching moment so incredible and so you should find this book and read it and you will know what i'm talking about so that's where i'll leave you for now and i will check in after another chapter or so hello everyone i have finished chapter 17 and we've just we've reached that moment in the book where i'm just sad i'm hurting i don't know what to do uh, Tanner's having it a bit rough too. I'm sorry, I can't. I can't be that mean. This. This is this is rough on Tanner right here. And you know what? We haven't seen it from Natalie's perspective, but I know this is tough on her as well. I love how romance makes us still feel in that dark moment. We still feel that that helplessness, that hopelessness, even though we know it's going to be okay really taken ourselves there though for the sake of the story is it's just something that that makes it that much more worth it in the end so i'm going to go ahead and finish up the book and i will check in with you there all right everyone i have finished an alaskan family christmas by beth carpenter and this was such a lovely sweet seasonal romance it was exactly what I needed for a Christmas read, for a holiday read. What a lovely return to heartwarming. Like, there are just some lines that I just love coming back to, and it's just, it's great. It's great. It's so, it's, heartwarming's one of those ones that you just love it every time you come back to it. You're like, oh yeah, that's why I really love this line. So thank you, Beth Carpenter, for giving us another amazing heartwarming read. This book had so much, so many fun elements in it, like the mistaken identity, a little bit of capering, the trapped together, snowed in Christmas, and a little bit of sleuthing as well there. And we got kind of like 1.5 times the love story in this one, which was super, super cute. Thank you again to Beth Carpenter. Thank you, Harlequin Books. Thank you, everyone that's on this category journey with me. I hope everyone had a wonderful holiday season, no matter what you do or do not celebrate. In the spirit of the season, I wish everyone the best. I'm not sure. I've got a little bit of time before New Year's, but I don't know if I can squeeze in a New Year's book. I have two of them that I wanted to squeeze in, but I don't know if I can do it. There was some other holiday ones that I wasn't able to get to. I think I'm just going to call it and I'll just add the New Year's reading to just the regular journey and it'll just be out of season. But anyway, enough about future journeys on this video. Make sure to check out Beth Carpenter's other works. I'm going to leave all sorts of links for her down below. She was such a wonderful sport on Twitter, and she, again, has been following my category journey since about the beginning, and it was so wonderful to finally feature her as an author on this journey. All right, everyone, that's where I'll leave you. I wish everyone a happy new year and a happy reading journey of your own, and I will see you in the next video.